Hey, what's going on? It's Joey Myers from the Hitting Performance Lab, and in this video, we're going to go over Hank Aaron's swing. And in particular, we're going to talk about how Hank Aaron's swing resembles the same connective tissue that kangaroos use to propel themselves forward, the same material that gazelles use as well in their endless bounding. Also, for human examples, Dean Carnassus, the marathon, the 50 marathons in 50 days guy, and then another example we talked about in an article, Paul Ravel, the lacrosse MLB, MLL, Major League Lacrosse player who can consistently throw the lacrosse ball over 100 miles per hour, and how they all use this connective tissue or this stability X pattern in their body. Now, with Hank Aaron, what you want to note, and I call this the catapult loading system. And what the catapult load loading system will do is it actually is helping my kids to get out of arm barring and a lot of the upper body, the very stubborn upper body hitting hitting issues and flaws. And what we're going to look at is is Hank Aaron, who, as most of you know, is second on the home run home run career list, and only second to Barry Bonds, who we all know did something a little bit more than just use his body the way it was supposed to be used. So I consider Hank Aaron's feet, along with the civil rights movement during the time, much, much better than how Barry Bonds did it. Hank Aaron did it at 6 foot, 180 pounds. So small players can hit like big players. So let's take a look at Hank Aaron's swing. This is a slow-mo of him just taking batting practice. He's This is in a game footage, so he's not really trying super, super hard. But what you'll see is a couple things. Some of the articles we talked about unweighting the bat, as you'll see Hank Aaron uses forward momentum to get the catapult loading system moving. That's very important because the catapult loading system can have a hard time, although it can be done. But if we can unweight the bat by getting the body moving forward, getting a body mass moving forward, it's going to make the catapult loading system much, much easier to execute. But what you're seeing here is a lot of instructors teach walk away from the hands. Now this is a guy that consistently hit over 30 home runs a season. Now he didn't hit over 30 home runs a season, but if you averaged all 23 years that he played and all 755 home runs, it comes out to like 31 home runs. This is a guy who's not walking away from his hands. And what you're actually seeing, we'll, we'll watch it from the back, the back view, like where the catcher's at. And what you're seeing is it's more like a boxer throwing a punch. Like the boxer, say Hank Aaron's a boxer and he's trying to throw a punch with his back hand, trying to throw it straight ahead here. And what you're going to see is almost that hand, those hands tuck in a little bit. And so you're going to see this tucking. He drops, he drops his hands a little bit and then brings him back up. But he tucks him, almost hiding him from the pitcher. And I don't have a view where we see him actually from the front at the start, where his hands are a little bit farther out in front. But, but you can see that he's not walking away from his hands. He's actually bringing them into his armpit almost. He's tucking his hands or pulling the punch, I like to call. So this stability X pattern, the reason why I call it that, is because at this point here, actually just a little before that, you're seeing as he tucks his hands, you're seeing this front shoulder come in towards his back hip and you're seeing the opposite side, this front hip moving away from the back shoulder. So what you're seeing on the back, on the back back, is going to be the opposite. So this front shoulder and back hip, the same line on the back side is going to be actually getting longer, lengthening, while this line here, the front hip and the back shoulder, is getting longer, the same line on the back is actually getting shorter. That's that stability X pattern that I referred to earlier. So we're seeing this crunching of the internal forces in our body, the connective tissue in our body, that gives us that springy-like material, like the, the red kangaroo or the gazelle or Dean Carnassus, the marathon guy, or Paul Ravel. It's using myofascial connective tissue. It's like cotton candy, cotton candy-like material that the, your bones and muscles float in. And then what you'll see is the reversal of those lines. So that front shoulder back hip gets shorter, that line, and then it'll get, it'll start moving away. So then the they reverse order. You get this back hip moving away from the front hip and then the, or fr from the back hip and then the front hip and the back shoulder move closer together. Stability X pattern. Now let's look at them from the back, back view. And we're going to show Hank Aaron as opposed to a discus 
thrower. This is this isn't just baseball movement or hitting movement. This is human movement. This is how humans move. Hitting isn't unique. Hitting is a part of rotational power, explosive rotational power, like other explosive athletes. And in a minute, I'm going to show you Jurgen Schultz, the world record holder for the discus. But here's a back view of Hank Aaron. As you see, the pitcher's not really doesn't look like he's really trying hard. He just kind of flit in there. So this ball is pretty slow getting to Hank. But as you'll see, you can see those hands. You see a little bit more of a starting point here with his hands where they're at. And what you'll see is you'll see him move down and behind him. You see how they just moved down and behind him. Now, hitters, I don't have my hitters drop their hands like this. Some hitters can do that. But what I like to get them to do is just to tuck their hands. To feel like they're getting ready to throw a punch that's going to they're going to be able to punch a hole through somebody's chest. And that's going to get watch the front shoulder in this case. Watch the front shoulder. I'm going to see if I can put a a line there. So let's see. Front shoulder is about where the bat's at. Now let's see where that front shoulder goes as it comes towards the back hip. You'll see it move almost in and down. So here it is right here in and down. And this is there's is a two part to the catapult loading system. The first part is that shoulder angle needs to go down like you're hitting downhill. And then the other part is tucking the hands. So as you see here, it's it has to do with spinal movement and the spine engine and how the, the spine drives all of our locomotion. But that's what you're seeing. You're seeing that front shoulder move in and down towards that back hip and then the back shoulder and front hip move away from each other. Now let's take a look at, Sh at Jurgen Schultz, the world record holder in the discus. This is shot in 1986 and the record still stands. But what you see is him load up the same X pattern, right? So you see this shoulder moving to this hip and then this shoulder moving away from the front hip. So we get rid of that. And then what you'll see is he's going to do a succession of spins, maybe two spins, I think, and he'll reverse. It's like an accordion. Those lines will reverse each other. They'll close. Now he's got this shoulder and this hip closing, and this shoulder and this hip opening. And then he'll close up, lengthen, and then at the end, here as he's closed up with the front shoulder to the, to the back hip, he's going to reverse that order and throw the discus almost three quarters of a football field. So this is the catapult loading system and how our bodies move like a springy kangaroo. It's human movement. If you have any questions, post them below the video. Thank you.